Five twenty-eight. Five hundred and twenty-eight. Five two eight. No matter how you say it, it's the highest score you can possibly get on the MCAT. Arguably the most challenging exam in the world, and that's why this score is so coveted. It means you received a perfect 132 on all four sections of the exam. It means you scored in the top one percent of everyone who has ever taken the test. Not only are you now a legend among your friends, but with that kind of score, every single medical school is in your reach. What does it take to get this score? How can you do better than almost everyone else? Hey guys, my name is Jack Weston, and today I'm going to discuss. How to score a 528 on the MCAT? The way you do it is actually very simple. You have to realize that it's not really that important. You see, the MCAT is simply one of many tools schools use to assess your application to determine how ready you are for the next level. In fact, most schools value a 516 just as highly. How is that possible? You've probably heard that most medical schools take a holistic approach to evaluate students. That means they assess you based on your entire application, not just one score. To do this, most schools use a zero to five scale to grade each part of your app. That includes your GPA, your personal statement, your extracurriculars, and of course your MCAT. If your MCAT score is really low, they'll rank it as a zero or one. And if your MCAT score is really high, well, the highest score they can give you is a five on this scale. You see, there are many scores that are in the five range, and that's 516 and above. By using a scale like this, where your research, your volunteering, and yes, your MCAT is graded from zero to five, they are taking a more comprehensive assessment, one that doesn't just depend on your scores. So why am I saying all of this? Well, it's to point out that a 528 doesn't matter. Yes. You do benefit from receiving a higher score, but not by as much as you may think. The MCAT is important so much so that if you get a zero or one on this scale, they won't even consider your application. It's more important to avoid a low score than it is to get a really high one. Does that mean you shouldn't have a goal to score a 528? The problem with this goal is that it's almost impossible to achieve. You are establishing poor and unrealistic expectations from the beginning. Almost no one starts off even close to scoring in the 520s during their practice. To get to this point, yes, you need to be sharp. Yes, you need to be hardworking. But more importantly, it depends on self-awareness. It's the ability to focus on yourself, to focus on how your actions, thoughts, or emotions do. Or don't align with your internal standards. If you're highly self-aware, you can objectively evaluate yourself, manage your emotions, and align your behavior with your goals. You need to be aware of what you are truly capable of right now, and what you need to work on to get to the next level or range. Let's say you're currently scoring in the 121 to 123 range for a particular section. It's not wise to aim for a 129 or 132 range right now. You are not being aware of your weaknesses, and that makes you less likely to achieve your ultimate goal. Focus on getting to the 124 to 126 range first, but you don't have to settle for this. From there, work towards the 127 to 129 range. Setting realistic expectations and following through with your work will ultimately help you get to the 129 to 132 range. You should also realize that once you're in this range, scoring closer to a 132 has a lot to do with luck. The key to achieving a 528 is ironically to not aim for a 528. If you want to get this score, aim for what you are capable of achieving next week or month. And if you work hard enough, any score is ultimately in your reach, even the notorious 528.